When we talk about the greatest shows of all time, Recess definitely falls in the top-notch category because it wasn't just a cartoon, it was a phenomenon. Kids everywhere fell in love with its hilarious antics and relatable adventures on the school playground. With its diverse characters and clever stories, it teaches us about friendship and acceptance in the coolest way possible. From the playground to serious stuff, Recess handles it all with humor and heart, making it a timeless classic that everyone loves. Before we begin, let's set some context for better understanding. Recess invites us into the bustling world of TJ Detweiler, Vince Lasell, Ashley Sp Benelli, Mikey Blumberg, Gretchen Grumler, and Gus Griswold as they navigate the quirky landscape of Third Street School. This isn't just any school, it's a vibrant, small-scale version of society, complete with its own government, social order, and unwritten rules. Under the reign of King Bob and his squad of enforcers, allegiance reigns supreme and students must toe the line to fit in. From epic battles against the school's kindergartners to elaborate schemes to outsmart the teachers, each episode is filled with humor, heart, and valuable life lessons about friendship, teamwork, and standing up for what's right. So without further ado, let's begin. The first episode kicks off with an unappetizing lunch, the infamous tomato surprise. A boy named TJ wishes for better food in the kitchen, but gets caught by the grumpy Ms. Finster, losing his recess. Hearing about his bad situation, his friends rally to support school-wide. Their mission leads them to King Bob, playground royalty, who mocks TJ. However, Spinelli's fiery speech ignites a revolution, branding everyone, even King Bob, as some dumb kid. Inspired, King Bob escorts his kingdom to aid TJ's escape. However, TJ frees himself before their arrival, discovering his friend's efforts too late. With recess ended, he feels a mixed feeling of happiness and disappointment, grateful for his friend's loyalty. They stand united, Spinelli, Vince, Gretchen, and Mikey, a formidable team called the Recess Gang. TJ and his friends concoct a plan to score an early recess, which surprisingly works. However, their joy is short-lived when the soldier's son, Gus, arrives as the new student. According to Playground Rules, he becomes the new kid, forever defined solely by this title. Feeling isolated, even his own parents and teacher treat Gus differently. TJ and the gang, moved by empathy, decide to help him reclaim his identity. But King Bob, the Playground Authority, intervenes, reinforcing Gus's new status. Fed up, Gus confronts King Bob, demanding his name back. Reluctantly, King Bob relents, welcoming Gus into the gang and restoring his individuality. As Gus celebrates the former new kid, Morris reflects on his own experience, prompting a casual response from King Bob. As dusk settles, the recess gang gathers for some spine-tingling tales. Vince spins a yarn about Jimmy Cratner's alien encounter, while Gus shares a tale of a carrot devouring oddball terming orange. Mikey warns of braces picking up radio signals, but TJ's story of a flattened gum-chewing train mishap tops them all. Their debate over the spookiest tale is interrupted by Butch's sudden appearance, sporting a striking white streak in his hair. He unveils a shocking truth, witnessing his brother Joey kissing a girl named Christy. The boys recoil in disbelief, but Butch insists it's real, warning them of a future where kisses replace playground games. The revelation leaves Gretchen and Spinelli unsettled, their attempts to shake off the disturbing thought proving futile. Faced with their unsettling conversation, the gang decides to test the theory. Gretchen proposes observing a willing boy and girl's kiss, recording reactions. TJ suggests using straws to choose, causing tension when he and Spinelli are picked. Reluctantly, they prepare with their friend's help, threading the ordeal. On the playground, surrounded by curious onlookers, TJ and Spinelli refuse until Gretchen reminds them it's for science. The gang's attempts to reschedule are foiled by Randall's announcement, forcing them to kiss. Despite a magical display, they feign disgust, easing the crowd's fears. Relieved, the boys vow not to like girls and vice versa. TJ and Spinelli, teasing Butch, encounter Jimmy, fresh from a spaceship ride. Unbeknownst to all, the playground remains a realm of surprises. A typical day at Third Street School takes an unexpected turn when Principal Prickly announces old Rusty's impending demolition for a new jungle gym. Upset by the loss of cherished memories, TJ stays behind after recess, refusing to budge when construction workers arrive. Miss Finster's intervention sparks a protest, with TJ's friends and other students joining in solidarity. Principal Prickly's attempts to end the standoff fail, leading to parental involvement, including influential figures like Swinger Girl's mother and Superintendent Skinner's brother-in-law. Moved by the community's passion, Principal Prickly relents, but old Rusty's collapse under the weight of protesters dampens the victory. However, the construction workers salvage parts to create new Rusty, lending old memories with new beginnings, restoring joy to the students. As recess begins, Gus innocently swaps his pet lizard for Barry's harmonica, soon regretting his impulsive trade. The gang educates him on their unspoken rule of honor, stressing the importance of keeping one's word. Meanwhile, the mischievous Ashleys concoct a rumor about Swinger Girl, but their boredom prompts them to eagerly embrace Ashley A's more devious suggestion. Elsewhere, Gus patiently waits his turn at the drinking fountain, 
with Vince reassuring him of their rendezvous at the Jumble Gym. However, Ashley A's interruption derails Gus in moment, invoking the code of honor in a teasing prank. Upon reuniting with the gang, Gus finds comfort, unaware of the Ashley's dark intentions. Confusion reigns as he struggles to convey his predicament through mime, with Gretchen attempting to decipher his gestures amidst Spinelli's insistence for clarity. Tension mounts with Ashley Q's interference, sparking a heated argument among the group. As the playground drama unfolds, Gus remains unwittingly entangled in the Ashley's sinister plot. Amidst the chaos, Gus resorts to writing his story in the sand, hoping to convey his predicament. However, Ashley A's distraction inadvertently leads to the trampling of his message by kindergartners. Desperate, Gus spots a notebook nearby, aiming to use it to explain his situation. But a confrontation with a sixth grader interrupts his plans, leaving him unable to clarify. Dragged before King Bob, Gus faces punishment at the wheel due to his enforced silence. Meanwhile, TJ and Spinelli intervene, confronting King Bob's guards. Miss Finster's arrival further complicates matters as she misinterprets Gus's actions as troublemaking. In Principal Prickly's office, tensions rise as Miss Finster suggests severe punishment for Gus. Attempting a different approach, Principal Prickly offers Gus candy to coax him into speaking. Despite his silence, the situation escalates with the arrival of the school superintendent and board of education officers. As Gus is escorted away, the student body shows support, lining the hallways with words of admiration. The realization dawns on the recess gang who resolve to save Gus from the Ashley scheme. Determined, they venture into the school, ready to confront the truth and rescue their friend. As Gus steps outside, a farewell chant of quiet boy echoes from his peers. Touching moments of reconciliation unfold, with the sixth grader apologizing and offering comfort, showcasing the bonds formed amidst the turmoil. Inside the school, TJ hatches a plan to save Gus, using the loudspeaker to break the jinx. As Gus's voice returns, relief washes over him and the officers acknowledge the children's unwritten code of honor, releasing Gus from their custody. Prickly begrudgingly accepts the situation, while the students celebrate Gus's return, hailing him as a hero. The gang watches proudly as Gus is carried off on their shoulders. Meanwhile, the Ashleys rue their mischievous antics, only to find themselves on the receiving end of a jinx from the gang, sparking laughter and camaraderie among the students. As the school returns to normalcy, the recess gang reflects on Gus's bravery and plots their next move, leaving the Ashleys to ponder their newfound predicament. In episode Office Mikey, Mikey witnesses a demonstration on the safety rangers. He becomes impressed and expresses his wish to become one, only to be told no. Feeling empathic, the recess gang then decides to help him by convincing King Bob to let Mikey pursue his dream as Officer Friendly. Mikey impresses his friends by briefly serving as Officer Friendly, aiding kids across the road. As they retreat from the rain, they reflect on their positive impact. However, their surprise turns to disappointment when they find Mikey back in his regular clothes at the cafeteria, confessing he quit. Despite attempts to remind him of his dream, Mikey reveals a new aspiration, to become a jet pilot. Excitedly sharing his newfound ambition, he realizes the gang has left feeling abandoned. Uncertain of their reaction, Mikey contemplates his next move amidst their disappointment. Randall's attempts to gather dirt on fellow students fail when he's caught by the Diggers, the Ashleys, and Spinelli, who destroy his recording device. Threatened by Finster, Randall discovers Spinelli's first name on her permanent record. Despite Spinelli's tough exterior, the revelation frightens her. Randall's demands push her too far, leading him to publicly reveal her full name, Ashley Spinelli. Spinelli's resistance stems not from her name's origin, but from its association with the snobby Ashley's clique. Invited to join the clique, Spinelli refuses, but playground rules force her acceptance. Inside the clubhouse, Spinelli faces a makeover and brainwashing attempt. TJ devises a plan. Everyone adopts the name Ashley, overwhelming the clique and freeing Spinelli. Grateful for their support, Spinelli remains true to herself, chasing off Randall. The gang, impressed by Spinelli's resilience, acknowledges her uniqueness. When TJ and the gang notice that Miss Finster has a crush on Hank the janitor, the gang hooks them up in order for Miss Finster to leave them alone. The student body is concerned where she begins being nice to everyone. However, after she ignores her playground duties in order to spend more time with Hank, the playground falls into havoc and chaos, and the gang have to try and break them up. In the end, it is revealed that the love letter was actually written by Miss Finster herself. She had written it as part of a writing exercise for her class, intending to throw it away afterward. However, the letter accidentally ended up in the hands of the school mail carrier, leading to confusion. During King Bob's absence due to tonsillitis, Gus assumes the role of substitute king, initially enjoying his newfound authority. However, as time passes, he becomes tyrannical, imposing harsh rules and a cookie tax, and imprisoning dissenters. The imprisoned students revolt against Gus, leading to a battle between the rebels and his guards. 
Just as the conflict intensifies, King Bob returns, reclaiming his position and restoring order. Despite his harsh rule, the gang forgives Gus, who reverts to being a regular student. King Bob appoints Spinelli as Lord Emperor of the West Playground, much to her excitement. Peace is restored, and the playground returns to normalcy under King Bob's leadership. When bullies target younger kids, Vince intervenes, showcasing his bravery in the recess gang. However, Vince's admiration for his older brother Chad, whom he considers the coolest guy at Third Street School, is shattered when he discovers Chad's geeky side. Despite initial denial, Vince learns to accept Chad's true nature. After Chad stands up to a bully on Vince's behalf, Vince realizes that being a geek doesn't diminish Chad's coolness. Their bond strengthens as Vince embraces Chad's confidence in his identity. The episode ends with Vince and Chad riding off together, demonstrating the power of acceptance and brotherly love. Miss Finster's ominous warnings about an upcoming non-graded achievement test stir anxiety among the students, with TJ teasing her cinematic style. While some, like Gretchen, breeze through effortlessly, others, like Mikey, struggle. TJ recounts the tale of Stinky Peterson, a brilliant student who vanished after acing the test. When Gretchen follows suit, she's summoned to Principal Prickly's office, fearing failure. To her surprise, she's declared a genius and offered a spot at Oppenheimer, a school for gifted children. Distressed about leaving her friends, Gretchen fiends ignorance to fail the review. Despite her friends' misguided attempts to help, Gretchen's brilliance shines through. In the end, she chooses friendship over opportunity, staying at Third Street School to teach the teachers. After a weekend away, the students return to find their class hamster, speedy, motionless, and unresponsive. Miss Grock tries to downplay the situation, but Gretchen discovers that Speedy has passed away. Distraught, the gang decides to hold a funeral for Speedy, enlisting the help of their classmates. Despite interruptions, including unexpected guests and a revelation that multiple hamsters named Speedy have been secretly replaced over the years, they honor Speedy's memory. In the end, they reflect on the different Speedies they've known, concluding with a heartfelt farewell to their beloved class pet. During a kickball game, Vince hits an impressive shot, but Ashley Q outdoes him with an incredible kick. Vince loses confidence and quits, declaring he'll never kick again. He becomes a lonely shut and obsessed with his glory days of the previous months. Consequently, the gang devises a plan to restore his confidence by substituting the regular kickball with Gretchen's Glorp Ball, known for its incredible bounce. Vince kicks the ball into the sky, but it turns out he used a real kickball, not the Glorp Ball. Miss Finster had taken the Glorp Ball to the ballroom, causing chaos with its bouncing. A mysterious kid known as the Peanut Butter Kid brings bad luck wherever he goes, causing chaos for the gang with damaged equipment and injuries. They realize he's a jinx and try to avoid him by sending him away. However, they later discover that their misfortune wasn't his fault and they feel guilty for mistreating him. When they try to apologize, the Peanut Butter Kid has found new friends. As a gesture of forgiveness, he gives them the remains of his sandwich. Reflecting on their actions, the gang decides to be more compassionate in the future, but they quickly flee when they encounter another potentially unlucky newcomer, a girl who always eats ice cream. After Jeffrey publicly declares his love for Gretchen, causing embarrassment, she has a nightmare about their future together. The next day, she decides to handcuff herself to him to make him understand the impact of his actions. However, Jeffrey clarifies that he only likes her as a friend and walks away, leaving Gretchen alone. This experience teaches him a lesson, and he doesn't bother Gretchen again. When wandering into the woods with Vince, TJ is captured by the kindergartners after happening upon the abandoned playground. Later on, he is depicted as wild savages with their own society and rules. As he spends time among them, he gradually regresses to a kindergarten mindset. Meanwhile, the gang, led by Vince, go on a search and rescue mission to find TJ before he becomes a kindergartner forever. TJ steals ice cream and is punished by Miss Finster, who introduces the box as a new form of discipline. When TJ is sent to the box, he develops a severe fear of it and square-shaped objects. Miss Finster takes advantage of his fear to make him do chores. TJ's friends devise a plan to help him overcome his fear by tricking him back into the box, ultimately restoring him to his usual self. Miss Finster is left emotionally shaken by the ordeal. During a dirt clawed war, Randall accuses Spinelli of hitting him with a rock, leading the other kids to turn against her. King Bob insists on a fair trial before any punishment. In court, Gretchen acts as the prosecutor while Spinelli's friends defend her. Randall and Mikey present their versions of the events, painting Spinelli in a negative light. Finally, TJ convinces Spinelli to tell the truth. She was about to throw a dirt clawed at Randall when she heard a cat in distress. She saved the cat, earning Miss Finster's praise. It's revealed that Randall injured himself out of jealousy, leading the kids to punish him instead. The gang anticipates the opportunity to peek inside the teacher's lounge as they wait for the annual budget request to be delivered. Despite their efforts to charm Miss Grock, Miss Lemon interrupts, demanding the requests personally. Feeling dejected, they put together a plan to break in. They enlist Cryer Kid's help, but when he cries for more money, they use a distraction to slip past Miss Finster. After a tense encounter with Mr. Yamashiro, they finally enter the lounge only to find it disappointing and messy. However, they soon discover a hidden luxurious room where the teachers gather, leaving them in awe and disbelief. Later, the gang is eyeing the ball trolley, 
but Randall snitches to Miss Finster. In return, he gets the good ball. However, he grows tired of TG's popularity and gets him punished. Randall confesses his envy of TG's qualities, leading to a deal where TJ promises to help him make friends if he stops snitching. Despite the gang's doubts, Randall tries to integrate but faces rejection. TJ suggests bribing them with a good ball, but Randall ends up being caught hoarding them. Feeling betrayed by Miss Finster's favoritism towards a new snitch, Randall returns to his old ways and rats out the gang. When recess is canceled due to rain, the kids are confined to the cafeteria under strict rules. As days pass, they grow restless and irritable, reminiscent of the legendary zombie class of 89. TJ realizes the rain is harmless and convinces his friends to enjoy it despite Miss Finster's objections. They embrace the rain, finding joy in splashing and dancing. Eventually, the sun breaks through and all the kids rush outside, only to return with colds. Despite the illness, they cherish the memorable experience of defying the rules and embracing the rain. After Principal Prickly announces the Thanksgiving can drive, Miss Croc's class feels discouraged, knowing the Ashleys always win. Despite this, Mikey remains optimistic about participating. As the drive progresses, Mikey's friends rally to help him collect cans, but the Ashleys use machines to outpace them. The gang expands their team to include other students, leading to a tie between Miss Grock and Miss Furley's classes. In a tug of war over the winning can, Mikey urges unity, but the cans spill, ruining the competition. Disheartened, Mikey walks away, prompting the gang and the Ashleys to unite and collect even more cans, impressing Mikey. Together, they donate a truckload of food to homeless shelters, learning the value of cooperation. Principal Prickly announces a holiday toy drive, signaling a new opportunity for unity. Mikey's singing talent is discovered after he impresses Principal Prickly with his bathroom performance. Despite initial reluctance, Mikey Mikey takes singing lessons from Miss Salomone and becomes popular at school. However, Mikey falls in love with Miss Salomone, unaware of her engagement. Heartbroken, Mikey hides during the PTA spring fling until Miss Salomone finds him. She gently rejects his feelings but praises his talent and encourages him to sing. Mikey's emotional performance earns him a standing ovation and Miss Salomone assures him he'll find someone his own age. Grateful for her support, Mikey moves forward, knowing he has a special connection with Miss Salomone. The kids discover that Dr. Quilty's documentary about recess could lead to its elimination. Feeling betrayed, they decide to create their own parody version to showcase the true essence of Recess. They sneakily swap out the original film with their edited version, which humorously portrays the fun and joy of Recess. During a preview, the adults, except for Dr. Quilty, enjoy the kid's version, recognizing its brilliance. Principal Prickly confronts Dr. Quilty, who tries to defend herself but fails. Superintendent Skinner and Dr. Fitzenberg praise the kid's film, indicating a bright future for Dr. Quilty working with children. As the adults leave, Prickly suggests someone for Skinner's middle school job, and Skinner shuts him down. Meanwhile, Dr. Quilty finds herself struggling to connect with kindergartners on the playground, highlighting her disconnect with children. The gang playfully ties up Dr. Quilty, symbolizing their triumph in reclaiming the spirit of recess. As she protests, they pull her into their pen, leaving her exclaiming, why me? Spinelli is hesitant about her parents attending parents' night, so she fabricates excuses to avoid it. However, her friends become curious about why she and her parents have never attended before. Despite Spinelli's efforts to prevent it, the gang tries to ensure her attendance. Spinelli eventually agrees to have her parents attend, but she hires actors to pretend to be her parents. However, the plan falls through and Spinelli's real parents show up later, embarrassing her more than she expected. As Spinelli reconciles with her parents, her father's true identity as a secret agent is revealed. His agent 006, and he uses parents' night as an excuse to skip a mission. Spinelli creates a cult centered around Swinger Girl after witnessing her swing over the top, believing she transcended to another dimension. Students, including Mikey and Gus, join, drawn to Spinelli's gentler but irrational behavior. Doubting her beliefs, TJ, Vince, and Greg Gretchen remains skeptical. Spinelli plans to swing over the top herself to join Swinger Girl, but Spinner Girl returns, revealing she almost made it but was called back. She clarifies she was on vacation, dispelling Spinelli's beliefs. The cult disbands, yet Spinelli's unwavering belief earns praise from her friends. Eventually, they swing together, acknowledging Spinelli's dedication. In Miss Grock's class, the gang expects TJ to write about them for an assignment on My Best Friend. Each vies for TJ's attention, leading to conflict and the gang splitting up, declaring each other not friends. TJ finds himself alone until Randall reveals that his friends have all found new best friends. TJ realizes he needs to choose one or none at all. He ultimately writes about each member of the gang, acknowledging their unique qualities. Miss Grock commends his essay, emphasizing the value of friendship. TJ reads his essay aloud, bringing the gang back together, united in friendship once more. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Randall, left alone, accidentally hits himself playing tetherball. At a school assembly, the amazing Jeffrey attempts to hypnotize Miss Finster, but accidentally hypnotizes Principal Prickly into behaving like a child. The gang sees an opportunity to have fun, but is warned by Randall, leading to chaos as Prickly disrupts school with childish antics. The gang helps Prickly regain his composure by convincing him to act like the principal again. After a struggle, Gretchen successfully reverses the hypnosis. Prickly forgives the gang, amused by his own antics, and Finster's attempts to discipline them are thwarted when she discovers 
discovers Prickly's childish doodles. Prickly reflects on the experience considering growing a goatee as he whimsically plays with a yo-yo. Due to a secret good relationship with her teacher, Spinelli accidentally calls her mama while trying to warn her of danger. This slit leads to merciless teasing and bullying, causing Spinelli to refuse to return to school. The rest of the gang, along with supportive teacher Miss Grock, work to rebuild Spinelli's confidence and combat the bullies. With Miss Grock's encouragement and the gang's solidarity, Spinelli learns to embrace her relationship with her teacher and stand up against bullying. Through their efforts, Spinelli regains her strength and returns to school with renewed confidence, supported by her friends and teacher. Ashley A. faces rejection from her clique after forgetting a significant holiday. Feeling isolated, she forms an unexpected friendship with Gretchen, who has also been feeling neglected by the gang. Their bond challenges the status quo and draws ire from both the gang and the other Ashleys. As Gretchen navigates between the two groups and grapples with her desire for popularity, she must reconcile her newfound friendship with her longing to fit in. In the end, Ashley A. reconciles with her friends and returns to the Ashleys, but with a newfound appreciation for the bonds of friendship that extend beyond social status. TJ and his friends stumble upon the game in the school's lost and found box. Intrigued by its appearance, they decide to give it a try. However, once they start playing, they find themselves drawn into the game's competitive world. As they progress through the game, TJ and his friends encounter various challenges and obstacles, each more difficult than the last. Along the way, they learn valuable lessons about teamwork, strategy, and perseverance. However, as the game intensifies, tensions rise among the group, and they begin to lose sight of the fun and camaraderie they initially shared. Caught up in the competitive spirit, they risk damaging their friendships in pursuit of victory. In the end, TJ and his friends realize that the true prize lies not in winning the game, but in the bonds they share with each other. They decide to stop playing and focus on enjoying each other's company, reaffirming the importance of friendship above all else. Miss Croc's belated package brings joy with a vintage bicentennial play ball, sparking a kickball game. Gus's luck earns him the first kick, but he accidentally launches it over the fence into the off-limits yard of no return. Teased by peers, Gus fears the consequences, imagining disastrous outcomes. Despite reluctance, he ventures over the fence. The gang, worried for Gus, follows and discovers a surprising truth. An elderly woman named Dot collects lost balls. Dot kindly returns the balls, debunking the myth of the yard of no return. Gus is found safe, enjoying cookies with the gang, who learn a lesson about facing fears and questioning assumptions. Gelman bullies Gus after his previous victim moves away, targeting him relentlessly despite warnings from Miss Finster. Conflicted on how to handle the situation, Gus seeks advice from Mikey and Spinelli, receiving conflicting suggestions. Ultimately, Gus's father's analogy of Belgium standing up to Germany in World War I inspires him to confront Gelman. Though he faces a tough battle, Gus's friends and fellow students rally to support him, mirroring the solidarity seen in World War I. Together, they help Gus triumph over the bully, demonstrating the power of unity against adversity. Miss Finster orchestrates an Operation Field trip to MISOOE, causing Bertha distress over her cherished bus, Old Smokey, facing retirement. During the journey, Miss Grock's incessant singing leads to Old Smokey's breakdown near an abandoned farm. Amid Bertha's despair, the students rally to repair the bus, determined to lift her spirits. As the kids enjoy a spirited game of kickball, Principal Prickly's brother, the other Principal Prickly, pays a surprise visit. Eager to impress, Prickly ensures the school is pristine. However, when the other Prickly challenges them to a kickball match, excitement ensues and the kids don purple and gold uniforms. Meanwhile, Gus wanders off, encountering curious school features like Upside Down Girl and Guru Kid. He falls into a hole dug by the school's diggers, revealing the school's surprising replica nature. The two teams, including identical clones of the kids, compete fiercely until TJ negotiates a draw. While the kids bond with their clones, the Prickly brothers and engage in a heated rivalry long after the game ends. In the Pee Wee Pals program, fourth graders are paired with kindergartners for recess. TJ's attempts to teach his partner Spencer backfire, causing chaos and anger among other students. Meanwhile, Gretchen, Vince, Spinelli, and Mikey successfully bond with their partners over various activities. Gus earns the nickname Safety Man by protecting his partner Hector from harm. Despite TJ's struggles, the program ultimately fosters positive connections between older and younger students. When Miss Grock is absent due to a boomian operation, the class anticipates takes a week of fun with the substitute Mr. E. However, Mr. E surprises them with his authoritative demeanor, except with TJ, who resists his control. Despite clashes, Mr. E assigns an independent study project, fostering growth and respect among the students. Throughout the week, Mr. E reveals a caring side, helping students with self-defense and poetry. During presentations, TJ surprises everyone with a heartfelt Get Well Soon card for Ms. Grock. Despite initial tension, TJ and Mr. E reconcile, acknowledging mutual respect. Mr. E signs TJ's card, and TJ finally claims that he is cool 
when he refuses to say what the E stands for. Gretchen discovers her talent for yo-yoing and becomes determined to master it, seeking guidance from a former yo-yoing master. As she focuses on her new passion, she alienates her friends and questions her priorities. Meanwhile, Principal Prickly organizes a yo-yo competition at school, fueling Gretchen's desire to prove herself. However, as the competition approaches, doubts creep in. With support from her friends, Gretchen learns the importance of balance and perseverance. In the end, she participates in the competition and impresses everyone, demonstrating that dedication and balance lead to success in both passions and friendships. In this parody of film noir, Gretchen narrates her quest to retrieve her lost handheld computer at Galileo, leading her into the seedy underbelly of Third Street School. She encounters troublemakers and assists them with their pranks to gather information about Galileo's whereabouts. In the end, Gretchen manages to recover Galileo and bring the culprit to justice, showcasing her intelligence and resourcefulness. In a baseball game, Vince saves Mikey from a near-hit ball, leading Mikey to idolize him. Mikey begins imitating Vince, causing concern among the gang and embarrassment for Vince. As Mikey takes over Vince's life, Vince retaliates by imitating Mikey, prompting a realization about being true to oneself. Mikey cannot stand it, and they have a talk about what is cool. What is cool is who you are. They return to their normal selves, restoring balance. In the next game, Mikey catches the ball, ending the episode with humor. Mikey stumbles upon Stuart, a mischievous stray cat causing chaos in the schoolyard. Despite Stuart's antics, he sees past his troublemaking behavior and decides to take him under his wing. However, when Stuart goes missing, the gang embarks on a frantic search to find him. Their efforts lead to a confrontation with the Ashleys who have found Stuart and claim ownership of him. What ensues is a battle between the two groups over Stuart's ownership, with both sides refusing to back down. The conflict escalates as tensions rise and the school becomes divided over who rightfully owns the cat. In the end, Mikey realizes that the most important thing is Stuart's well-being and he selflessly decides to let him go, allowing Stuart to roam freely without being owned by anyone. After a fight sparks a memory of a forgotten rule by a past king, King Bob fears being forgotten himself. Inspired by ancient Egypt, he calls for a pyramid to mark his reign, appointing Gretchen as a master builder. The project becomes grueling, with Bob's demands leading to rebellion. As the pyramid collapses in rain, Bob realizes his folly. Gretchen consoles him, emphasizing deeds over monuments. Bob relents, restoring recess and repealing the gum tax. The kids forgive him, and Bob vows no more pyramids, returning to being King Bob. Lawson and the Recess Gang have a baseball game, but tension rises when TG uses the word HOMPS, a substitute for swearing. Despite efforts to avoid trouble, Finster catches him and sends TJ to Principal Prickly's office. Prickly, even Hwamps, a taboo word, escalates the issue to the Board of Education. Mr. White, a strict enforcer, leads TJ to court after a speech mishap. Surprisingly, Superintendent Skinner finds Wamps innocuous, leading to TJ's release. In the end, Prickly laments the ordeal, concluding this Wamps. On a Thursday night, Spinelli's parents drag her to the supermarket where she bumps into Miss Finster. Discovering Spinelli's parents need a babysitter for the weekend, Miss Finster volunteers. Reluctant, Spinelli agrees after encouragement from her friends, recalling a past incident with Miss Grock. At Miss Finster's home, Spinelli endures peculiar meals and TV shows, bonding over old photos. On the weekend, they run errands, leading to Spinelli inadvertently hurting Finster's feelings. However, they reconcile with a heartfelt hula dance. On Monday, Miss Finster reverts to her strict self, scolding Spinelli for being late. Despite Spinelli's explanation, Finster insists on discipline as Spinelli heads back to school. After returning from illness, he faces a new currency system at school called Monstickers. He learns that Menlo has become popular popular due to his wealth and monstickers, prompting TJ to desire them too. TJ trades his cap for monstickers but realizes he needs more to regain it. He becomes a monsticker tycoon, exploiting various opportunities and monopolizing the market. However, his greed leads to inflated prices, causing discontent among students. When TJ discovers a new currency lick and stick alien stamps, he learns a valuable lesson about fairness and signs a contract to limit his control. He returns to work to earn the new currency, realizing the importance of balance and community. On a crowded day at Third Street School, the gang faces a chaotic recess with long lines and packed play areas. Lunch disappoints with a menu change from tuna fish tacos to cream liver and eggplant. The gang dreams of having a school to themselves, but the next day, they find it deserted due to six students. With Miss Grock's approval, they enjoy a day of free Freedom, exercise creativity, and indulge in pizza. However, boredom sets in with stale pizza and excessive homework. Desperate to return to normalcy, they concoct a plan to fake illness, leading to a hilarious misunderstanding and unexpected quarantine by the CDC. Despite their initial excitement, the gang ultimately longs to be back with their friends outside. As Christmas approaches, Hank hopes for snow, but the weather remains warm. The gang reminisces about past Christmases, while Mikey eagerly prepares for the school Christmas play, auditioning for the role of Santa. Despite his enthusiasm, Mikey faces skepticism from his friends about Santa's existence. Determined to prove him wrong, Mikey embarks on a quest to find the real Santa, leading to comical encounters with a mall Santa and a mayoral imposter. Disheartened by his failed attempts, Mikey decides not to participate in the play. Meanwhile,
well. A school decides to cast Randall as Santa in Mikey's absence. However, on the night of the play, Mikey has a heartwarming encounter with an elderly man who restores his belief in Santa. Inspired, Mikey rushes to the play to surprise everyone as Santa, bringing joy to the audience and sparking snowfall outside. As the gang celebrates the snowy evening, they encounter the mysterious old man again, who turns out to be the real Santa Claus. With renewed belief in the magic of Christmas, Mikey and his friends enjoy the holiday festivities, culminating in a heartwarming realization that Santa is indeed real. In a hair-raising mishap, Mikey's attempt at a record-breaking bubblegum bubble ends with a disastrous haircut by TJ convinced by his friends that it's the latest rock star trend, Mikey becomes a school sensation. However, Spinelli and Gretchen return, exposing the haircut's falsehood. As the truth spreads, an angry mom pursues TJ and Vince, leaving Mikey amused by their predicament. With his hair regrowth as the only remedy, Mikey watches TJ and Vince flee the consequences, ending the episode with a comedic chase into the sunset. Spinelli's reputation takes a hit when she's enrolled in dance class to curb her aggression. Reluctant at first, she finds solace in partnering with Mikey, who shares his struggles with dance due to his size. Despite initial reluctance, they become a dynamic duo. However, Spinelli's concern for her reputation leads to her backing out of a performance, disappointing Mikey. Witnessing his disappointment and TJ mocking, Spinelli has a change of heart, joining Mikey on stage to deliver a mesmerizing performance. Through dance, Spinelli learns the value of friendship over reputation, a lesson echoed by Mademoiselle Pavlova, who shares her own past struggles. In the end, their performance earns admiration and brings Spinelli closer to her friends and herself. TJ's tenure as principal for a day starts with enthusiasm, but soon takes a turn when he struggles to balance authority and popularity. His leniency with rules leads to chaos, especially when his rival Lawson breaks them. Wanting to prove himself, TJ confronts Lawson, but he begins to question his approach to discipline. Principal Prickly offers guidance, showing TJ the importance of maintaining order while still being fair. TJ takes the advice to heart, implementing stricter rules and punishments. However, he soon realizes that his actions are alienating his friends and undermining the fun atmosphere of the school. In a bold move, TJ changes course, transforming the planned disciplinary assembly into a celebration demonstrating his commitment to both discipline and camaraderie. Though his initial approach faltered, TJ ultimately finds a balance between authority and inclusivity, earning the respect of both his peers and Principal Prickly. At the Ashley's clubhouse, Ashley hatches a plan to humiliate Spinelli by signing her up for the Little Miss Blush Beauty Contest. Spinelli is shocked and humiliated when she finds out. Determined to get back at the Ashley's, Spinelli decides to compete in the pageant with the help of Vince, Gretchen, and Gus. Vince trains Spinelli in various pageant skills, including walking in heels and answering questions. Despite Despite some mishaps during training, Spinelli manages to impress the judges during the contest. When it's time for the final round, she surprises everyone by embracing her true self and refusing to conform to traditional beauty standards. She decides to quit the contest, but the judges recognize her authenticity and declare her the winner, much to the dismay of the Ashleys. The episode ends with Spinelli proudly strutting down the runway, proving that she doesn't need a crown to be a queen. As picture day unfolds at Third Street School, Gus eagerly prepares for his first class picture, aiming to make his parents proud. Meanwhile, the rest of the recess gang dreads the event, lamenting the need to stay clean all day. Despite their misgivings, they band together to support Gus, who reveals he's never had the chance for a class picture due to frequent moves. With TJ's leadership, they navigate chaos as kindergartners wreak havoc, ensuring Gus stays clean. In a heartwarming twist, TJ and Gus emerge unscathed, symbolizing their friendship's resilience amidst chaos. Ultimately, Gus's father, proud of his son's loyalty, cherishes the class photo, messy surroundings and all. During recess, Gretchen poses a complex math problem, which stumps the entire gang until Hank the janitor effortlessly solves it. Impressed, Gretchen invites Hank to form a math-lectic club in the school's boiler room, much to the gang's disinterest. Gretchen is puzzled why someone as brilliant as Hank is only a janitor. The gang decides to help Hank find a new job by posting his notes online. Soon, offers flood in from a university professor, the military, and a NASA scientist. However, Hank politely declines, explaining he prefers prefers math as a hobby, not a job. After another dodgeball defeat to the fifth graders, the gang learns Gus was once feared as El Diablo at his old school for his dodgeball skills. Skeptical, they confront Gus, who denies it until TJ throws a ball at him, triggering his reflexes. Gus confesses he stopped playing after accidentally hurting a kid, vowing never to dodgeball again. Despite needing him for a rematch, they respect his decision. Unable to call off the match, the fourth graders face the fifth graders. When Hector is mistakenly hit, Gus, in rage, becomes El Diablo and wins the game. He decides decides to retire, earning Hector's admiration. As Gus walks away, Hector calls for him to stay, ending the tale. Principal Prickly hosts a career day assembly, 
but Spinelli finds it dull compared to her friend's ambitions. Vince aims for intergalactic sports, Mikey dreams of being a bard, Gretchen envisions solving global issues with clones, Gus aspires to military service, and TJ sets his sights on the presidency. Spinelli, however, just wants to enjoy childhood. Disturbed by a nightmare of homelessness and old age, Spinelli seeks advice from Pat Patterson, who assures her it's okay not to have it all figured out. Relieved, Spinelli joins her friends at school, embracing the freedom of youth by playing tag. Mikey feels conflicted as the kindergarten derby approaches, still haunted by his own past experience in the race. Despite his protests, the tradition continues, with each older kid sponsoring a kindergartner. Feeling disillusioned, Mikey initially refrains from choosing a racer until he meets Tubby, who asks for his help. Reluctantly, Mikey agrees to train him. As the race begins, Tubby falls behind but surprises everyone by plowing through obstacles. Against the odds, Tubby wins, prompting Mikey to use his wish to end the derby tradition. Reluctantly, King Bob agrees, bringing joy to Mikey and signaling a positive change on the playground. TJ challenges Vince to a bet to improve his sportsmanship, wagering comics against mystery books. However, Vince's reaction to losing worsens his behavior. As Vince spirals, TJ and the gang realize their mistake in underestimating his pride. They learn that sportsmanship encompasses both winning and losing gracefully. In the end, Vince learns humility and apologizes, understanding the value of fair play. The episode ends with TJ and Vince reaffirming their friendship, recognizing the significance of camaraderie and respect in games games and in life. Gretchen receives an invitation from NASA to join a space mission, leaving her friends in awe of her accomplishment. However, TJ feels overshadowed and envious of Gretchen's opportunity. Struggling with his jealousy, TJ learns to support Gretchen and celebrate her success with the help of his friends and astronaut Buzz Aldrin. In the end, Gretchen's mission is a triumph and TJ learns to appreciate and celebrate the achievements of others, recognizing the value of supporting his friends' dreams. During recess, the gang lounges around, observing the playground happenings. Gus spies on King Bob, Guru Kid, and Artie Kid while TJ and Spinelli remark on Randall's penchant for tattling. When Randall reports Artie Kid's chalk masterpiece to Miss Finster, he faces ridicule and mockery from other kids. Later, while sorting through last year's lost and found box, Randall discovers the big book of jokes and decides to keep it. That night, he indulges in the book's humor, unaware of the trouble it will cause. Randall's newfound jokes initially amuse his peers, but things take a turn when he targets Mikey. Concerned, the gang intervenes to stop Randall's hurtful jokes and restore harmony to the playground. TJ arrives at school with a noticeable black eye, sparking curiosity among his friends. Despite their inquiries, TJ remains tight-lipped about the cause. Rumors spread, painting TJ as a hero who bravely faces an unknown danger. Soon, the entire school is buzzing with speculation. As TJ basks in the attention and perks of his newfound hero status, including special treatment and gifts from his peers, he decides to embrace the role. However, when pressured to recount his heroic tale, TJ struggles with the truth. Eventually, he admits to his friends that the black eye was the result of a mishap at a square dancing event, not a heroic deed as rumored despite the disbelief of his peers, TJ remains humble and true to himself, realizing that being a hero is not about grand gestures but about honesty and integrity. As the school celebrates Sir TJ the Brave Day, TJ reflects on the absurdity of his situation, with even a talking corn chip chiming in on his decision to tell the truth. After injuring his arm in a kickball game, TJ is banned from recess and must spend time with the pale kids deemed the least cool in school. Despite initial wariness, he bonds with them over shared interests in Sigur Fusion Comics. As he spends more time with them, he learns they're not so different and even takes them to Comicopolis as a farewell gesture. When his cast is removed, he decides to include the pale kids in a kickball game, surprising his friends. They realize the pale kids deserve friendship too, marking a shift in their perceptions. Later, Spinelli develops a crush on Johnny Baby Tooth V, leading to teasing from her friends and rumors spreading. Spinelli struggles with her emotions and unwanted attention, feeling vulnerable and unsure of how to handle the situation. Despite facing teasing and ridicule, she learns to embrace her feelings and stand up for herself with the support of her friends. In the end, Spinelli realizes it's okay to have a crush and finds the confidence to be true to herself, regardless of others' opinions. On the day before Valentine's Day, TJ expresses his disgust for the holiday, but his friends excitedly embrace it. Feeling annoyed by their enthusiasm, he decides to prank Valentine as a protest. However, when the girls appreciate his handmade cards, TJ tries to cover up his intentions. As the truth is revealed, the girls become upset and chase him. Seeking refuge, TJ and Vince hide in the boys' bathroom, where they face the girls' wrath. Ultimately, TJ apologizes, but his joke about Valentine's causes more trouble. The episode ends with TJ being chased by the girls, while Vince thinks that next year, TJ should buy his cards like a normal kid, 
with Gus adding that he will never be a normal kid. TJ and Vince, inspired by the Barnaby Boys, embark on a mystery-solving adventure at school. Disguised as detectives, they investigate strange occurrences linked to the temporary janitor. Despite facing challenges and doubts, they persist in uncovering the truth. In the end, they discover that the janitor is an undercover inspector assessing the school's cleanliness. Their teamwork and sleuthing skills lead to solving the mystery, restoring order to Third Street School. Miss Grock gives TJ an old history book, inside which he finds a treasure map. Excited, he shares it with the gang, leading them on a treasure hunt across the school grounds. They face suspicion from Miss Finster and Principal Prickly, but persist in their search. Eventually, they realize the treasure is buried in the faculty parking lot. With the help of Diggers, Dave and Sam in the Ashley's clubhouse, they dig up the treasure, only to find it filled with old toys and a letter from past students. Feeling remorseful for their behavior, they decide to add their own toys to the chest for future students to enjoy. Meanwhile, Principal Prickly reveals to an old friend that they were the ones who buried the treasure decades ago. The Recess Gang sets out on a book report assignment and hears rumors about the mysterious library kid who supposedly lives in the library. Curious, they search for her and eventually find her among the stacks. They convince her to join them for recess, but she struggles to adapt to the outdoor environment, playing recklessly. Gretchen takes charge and guides her through safe play helping her adjust and find a balance between books and outdoor activities. With the gang's support, the library kid learns to enjoy recess responsibly thanks to TJ and his friends' friendship and guidance. Later, the recess gang faces a challenge when the Ashleys start rating students based on behavior. TJ receives low scores, causing his friends to distance themselves. Feeling isolated, Gus talks to pigeons while TJ struggles to find support. Despite the Ashleys' attempts to discredit him, TJ remains determined. Inspired by his courage, the gang embraces their negative ratings and devises a plan to unite the school. They succeed succeed in thwarting the Ashley's divisive tactics, restoring harmony, and TJ announces an all-kid dodgeball game, symbolizing their newfound unity. TJ is thrilled about the premiere of the first Seer Fusion movie and wants to organize a school trip to see it. With his friend's support, they convince several teachers to endorse the idea, but Principal Prickly remains skeptical. Despite Prickly's opposition, TJ persists. When Prickly tries to thwart his plans, TJ confronts him prompting Prickly to relent. On the day of the movie, Lawson's attempt to ditch detention for the show backfires, teaching a lesson about honesty. Nevertheless, TJ succeeds in uniting the school for an enjoyable outing, highlighting the power of determination and integrity. TJ decides to prank Randall with oatmeal, leading Randall to complain to King Bob. Surprisingly, King Bob reveals his own history as a prankster. Inspired, TJ aims to pull a prank on King Bob, earning the title of Prankster Prince. While his friends believe in him, TJ struggles to outsmart King Bob, who foils every attempt. Instead, TJ ends up as King Bob's servant until a whoopee cushion prank backfires on the king, showcasing the unexpected twists of prankster rivalry. Feeling sidelined, Gus teams up with the hustler kid to gain recognition among his peers. Initially excited, Gus throws himself into their ventures, but as their schemes escalate, he becomes uneasy. Confronted with the ethical dilemmas of their actions, Gus struggles to assert his values. When a risky scheme backfires, causing chaos, Gus realizes he can't condone the hustler kid's behavior. Despite his desire for acceptance, Gus chooses integrity over success, ending their partnership to do what's right. As the recess gang faces repeated defeats on the playground, they suspect a traitor in their midst leaking their plans to their rivals. Their investigation leads them to discover that James Stone, a new student, is the culprit. Despite feeling betrayed, TJ and the gang decide to befriend James and uncover the reason behind his actions. They learn that James feels lonely and was coerced by Randall into spying. Moved by his plight, they devise a plan to thwart Randall's manipulation and empower James. With their support, James confronts Randall, breaking free from his control. In a heartwarming conclusion, TJ and the gang welcome James into their fold, showing him kindness and solidarity. Gus is determined to stop Gelman's bullying reign by constructing the Geleminator 6000, but doubts his courage to use it. A fortune-telling device appears, predicting TJ's test success, Spinelli's wealth, and Gretchen's trip, unsettling Gus with a grim prophecy. Despite skeptical outcomes, TJ's grade is a dismal 10.1%, Spinelli returns the $50 to Ashley A, and Gretchen's trip is canceled due to age restrictions. Realizing the fallacy, Gus shifts focus to enjoying his remaining time seeking advice from the Guru Kid. Inspired, he resumes building the trap. As Gelman approaches, Miss Finster intervenes, triggering the trap, trapping her instead. Traumatized, Gelman renounces bullying. The gang dismantles the fortune teller, relieved Gus the time is an ending. However, Gus faces detention until 6th grade while Gelman's perspective shifts, no longer terrorizing others. The gang notices Mikey's frequent exploitation on the playground, but he dismisses it as routine. The next day, however, Mikey is treated with undue deference, prompting suspicion. They discover a rumor circulating about Mikey pushing a boy into the girl's bathroom. Determined to find the source, they uncover Randall as the culprit, surprising them all. Confronting Randall, they demand an end to the harmful gossip, standing up for their friend and putting a stop to the spread of false rumors. During lunch, Gus finishes his chocolate milk before his sandwich, prompting thirst. As he seeks more milk, 
Mashed potatoes fly, sparking a massive food fight. After cleaning, Gus considers telling Miss Finster, but fears being labeled a tattletale. Guru Kid advises the same. During interrogation, Gus stays silent. Finster blames her snitch, Randall. Angry kids target Gus, but Finster reveals Randall's guilt. Gretchen questions the evidence, prompting Finster to admit the kid's silence made Randall a suspect. King Bob pardons all due to a lack of garbage cans. Guru Kid confesses to spreading the rumor, sparing Gus. Amidst chaos caused by King Bob's erratic behavior, TJ and his friends uncover the root of his madness, stress, and isolation. They unearth deeper tensions within the playground hierarchy. Determined to help, they devise a plan to alleviate King Bob's stress and restore his confidence. With support from fellow students, they rally around King Bob, helping him rediscover the joy of leadership. In the end, King Bob regains his sanity, returning as a benevolent ruler, strengthened by the friendship and support of TJ and the gang. Gus goes through a series of events where he decides to ditch his glasses to be cool, but it leads to chaos and misunderstandings. He adopts the persona of Guy without glasses, thinking it makes him look better. However, without his glasses, he bumps into things, misreads assignments, and even gets hit in the head during kickball. His friends try to convince him to wear his glasses again, but Gus refuses, believing he looks cooler without them. Eventually, Hector, a younger student, confronts Gus, explaining that without his glasses, Gus is scary danger man, but with them, he's safety man. The cool and responsible friend. Realizing the impact of his actions, Gus retrieves his glasses, and Hector proudly declares him safety man as he climbs down from the rooftop, where he got stuck, finally embracing both his coolness and responsibility. Principal Prickly considers leaving 3rd Street for a middle school job until Slicer, a harsh disciplinarian, arrives as his potential replacement. TJ and the gang attempt various schemes to deter Prickly's departure, but all fail. Despite TJ's heartfelt plea, Prickly decides to stay, citing financial reasons. However, his supple smile suggests there may be more to his choice. As Slicer's reign begins, the school braces for stricter rules, leaving the true reason behind Prickly's decision ambiguous. On Randall's birthday, he convinces TJ and the gang to pose as his best friends to impress his visiting father, unaware of Randall's social standing. Reluctant due to past troubles with Randall, they agree to keep up the charade until his father leaves. However, during recess, T.T. gets caught in a prank gone wrong and is sent to detention by Miss Finster. The gang, along with Randall, concocts a plan to free T.J. but gets caught in the act. Miss Finster scolds Randall but lets him off with a warning due to his special day. Randall apologizes to his father, who empathizes, revealing his own childhood struggles. The episode ends with them walking home, Randall grateful for his father's understanding. The journalist reports on the return of the Thaddeus T. Third II statue to the school. However, during installation, the workers forget to secure it, leading to a disastrous collapse when the recess gang climbs atop it. Dubbed the Destructive Six by the media, the kids face severe punishment, including cleaning tasks and a hearing with Mayor Fitzhugh. Despite their efforts to apologize, Fitzhugh remains adamant about separating them into different schools. However, the situation takes a turn when Thaddeus T. Third V intervenes, revealing old photos showing adults engaged in similar antics as kids. He persuades Fitzhugh to drop the punishment, emphasizing that accidents happen, ultimately leading to the kid's exoneration and a heartfelt moment of reconciliation. During a kickball game, Vince's kick sparks a dispute with Lawson over whether it's a home run or a strikeout. Seeking clarity, they involve King Bob, who orders a search for rulebooks. Jordan and Jerome discover old King Morty's rulebook from 1935, impressing King Bob, who reinstates Morty's laws. Initially fun, Morty's rules lead to unconventional games like basketball, with rags and buckets. Gretchen realizes Morty's laws cater to the Great Depression's scarcity of balls. TJ convinces King Bob to update the rules, emphasizing modern abundance. Eventually, Morty's rules are retired, replaced by a fairer coin flip for disputes like Vince's kick, thanks to TJ's reasoning. Gus is persuaded by Mundy, Schemes, and Lazy Kid to join them in shoplifting candy from Kelso's, under the guise of a harmless prank. Despite his reservations, Gus goes along with a plan, only to feel immense guilt afterward. Meanwhile, TJ and the gang notice Gus's unusual behavior and investigate, uncovering the truth about the theft. Realizing the seriousness of his actions, Gus confesses and returns the stolen candy, learning important lessons about integrity and resisting peer pressure. Despite facing consequences, Gus emerges with a newfound understanding of honesty and accountability. Gretchen faces a difficult situation when she shares her top secret science fair project with a fellow student only to have that student steal the project as her own. Initially, she is excited about her project and eager to share it with someone she trusts. However, 
When the other student takes advantage of Gretchen's trust and claims the project as her own, she feels hurt and betrayed. Throughout the episode, she grapples with feelings of anger and disappointment as she tries to come to terms with what happened. She struggles to confront the other student and assert her own rights to the project. However, with the support of her friends, Gretchen eventually finds the courage to stand up for herself and reclaim her project. During a game of kickball, Mikey accidentally rips his pants while trying to retrieve the ball. The gang recalls the tale of Joey Feinstock, who suffered humiliation after tearing his pants and moved away as a result. Determined to help Mikey avoid a similar fate, they attempt various makeshift solutions to cover the rip, but each one fails. Eventually, they resort to using space pants, which also tear apart inexplicably. Miss Finster catches on to Mikey's torn pants and chases the gang who seek refuge in the Ashley's clubhouse. However, they are eventually found out and Mikey decides to face the humiliation alone. Moved by his bravery, TJ, Vince, and Gus tear their own pants to join him in solidarity. King Bob recognizes their sacrifice and orders the others to show respect. Miss Finster fixes their pants and despite the embarrassment, Mikey expresses gratitude to his friends for their support. Jared Smith, the new kid in Gus's class, quickly impresses everyone with his intelligence, athleticism, and various talents. However, his constant outshining of his peers leads to jealousy and resentment among the students. They conspire to sabotage Jared's reputation, but their efforts only serve to reinforce his desire for friendship. Jared reveals that he never intended to show off his abilities and just wanted to fit in. His humility and kindness eventually win over the other kids who accept him as a friend. In the end, Jared's departure is as mysterious as his arrival as he is summoned for a meeting with the president, leaving behind a lasting impact on his classmates. Vince excitedly shares his lucky marble with the gang, hoping it will help him win the football game against the boot. However, Spinelli borrows it for her test and discovers its seemingly magical properties. She tests its luck in various games, but unfortunately, she accidentally drops it. Despite Spinelli's apology, Vince forgives her and moves on with a new lucky charm, a shiny nickel. The day starts calmly, but tension brews among the diggers, leading Dave to quit digging altogether. Gus falls into one of Sam's holes the next day, prompting the gang to intervene. They discover that without Dave's guidance, Sam digs aimlessly, causing chaos. Realizing the problem, the gang devises a plan to reunite the diggers. Initially unsuccessful, they stage a fake emergency to bring Dave back to rescue Sam. However, they find Sam relaxing with Spinelli, revealing their ruse. Nonetheless, the diggers reconcile, realizing they need each other's guidance. With Harmy restored, the gang enjoys their recess together. The day takes a chaotic turn when Spinelli accidentally breaks the school clock, leading to the introduction of the new SAL 3000 clock and bell system by Principal Prickly. However, SAL's precise control of a recess and dismissal soon spirals out of control when it malfunctions, causing chaos and inconvenience for the students and staff. Gus becomes locked out of the school due to SAL's malfunction, sparking suspicion about the system's reliability. As ACL's malfunctions escalate, the students realize they must take action to stop him. Despite initial doubts, they unite to shut down SAL and restore order to the school. With teamwork and determination, Spinelli, Gordy, and Wiley distract SAL while Mikey, Gus, Gretchen, Vince, and TJ work together to reach the control center and deactivate the malfunctioning system. Ultimately, they succeed in disabling SAL and restoring the old school clock, bringing an end to the chaos caused by the rogue AI. Gus's misunderstanding of his parents' conversation about Operation Relocation leads him to believe he'll have to move again, prompting him to run away and take up residence in Old Rusty. With the help of the recess gang, Gus tries to make his new home more comfortable, but ultimately finds himself feeling lonely and scared when the lights go out. Fortunately, TJ's concern for his friend leads him to call Gus's parents, who arrive just in time to reassure Gus that Operation Relocation simply means he's getting a bigger bedroom. Relieved and happy, Gus returns home with his parents and TJ smiles knowing his friend is safe and sound. The return of the dude as a student teacher brings excitement to TJ and the gang, who idolize his charismatic and rebellious nature. However, they quickly realize that his teaching style is unconventional and chaotic, leading to disorder in the classroom. As the episode unfolds, TJ and the gang come to understand that while the dude may be fun and entertaining, his lack of discipline and structure hinder his ability to effectively educate the students. Ultimately, they learn that balance is essential in teaching as it requires a blend of charisma and structure to create a conducive learning environment. Feeling marginalized during the selection process for a game of battle tag, Menlo and Randall join forces to seize control of Third Street School. Believing their shared sense of neglect gives them common ground, they impose strict rules to assert their authority. However, their actions lead to chaos and resistance among the students. As TJ and the gang rally against their oppressive rule, Menlo and Randall realize their mistake. Through the rebellion, they learn the importance of empathy and cooperation. 
understanding that true recognition comes from genuine connections rather than forced authority. As Vince and Gretchen face off in the class president election, TJ strategizes to split the girls' vote by backing Ashley Arm Bruster as a third-party candidate. However, as the campaign progresses, TJ grapples with the morality of his actions. Meanwhile, Vince and Gretchen engage in fierce competition, resorting to various tactics to gain an advantage. Despite their rivalry, they ultimately realize the importance of their friendship and decide to join forces, running as co-presidents. Their decision results in a tie, leading to Vince and Gretchen sharing the role of class president. Gretchen's plan to earn money by doing classmates' homework backfires when they fail a test because they didn't study the material she completed for them. Realizing her mistake, she feels guilty and takes responsibility for their failure. Determined to make amends, she devises a plan to tutor her classmates and help them understand the material they missed. Using her intelligence and teaching skills, she guides them through the material and encourages them to take responsibility for their own learning. Through hard work and dedication, Gretchen's classmates are able to grasp the concepts they missed and pass the test. Spinelli's vibrant chalk drawing on the school playground captivates everyone, but when strict Miss Finster threatens to erase it, TJ and the gang leap into action. They devise clever distractions to keep Miss Finster occupied while Spinelli finishes her masterpiece. Using teamwork and creativity, they outsmart Miss Finster and protect Spinelli's artwork, teaching valuable lessons about friendship and standing up for what's right. In the end, Spinelli's talent is celebrated and the gang's unity prevails. In this episode, TJ is determined to befriend Gordy, the only student at Third Street School who doesn't like him. Despite Gordy's indifference, TJ tries everything to win him over, from offering gifts to showcasing his athletic skills. However, Gordy remains uninterested. Undeterred, TJ continues his efforts to connect with Gordy, refusing to give up on the possibility of friendship. Along the way, he learns important lessons about empathy and acceptance, realizing that genuine friendship cannot be forced. Ultimately, TJ's persistence and genuine kindness pay off, and he finally earns Gordy's friendship. Gus feels jealous when Yope, a new Norwegian student, claims Gus as his special friend, sparking insecurities. When he realizes Yope doesn't know he is actually seen as a loser, Gus lies to him that he's the school's hot kid. Meanwhile, Yoke's integration into the school intrigues others, intensifying Gus's jealousy. Despite TJ and the gang's reassurances, he struggles with feeling overshadowed and replaced. Eventually, with their support, Gus learns to embrace Yope as a friend, realizing that their bond doesn't diminish his existing friendships. Through this experience, Gus learns the importance of acceptance, inclusivity, and celebrating diversity in friendship, strengthening his connections with both Yope and his peers while reaffirming the value of understanding and accepting others. At the bus stop, Mikey's mom embarrasses him about his upcoming 10th birthday and impending independence. However, Mikey's nostalgia for his childhood resurfaces when he encounters a bonky the Green Dragon Sippy Cup. He begins exhibiting kindergarten-like behavior, alarming his friends. Despite their efforts to help, Mikey's obsession with Bonky escalates, leading to ridicule from classmates. The gang decides to intervene, confiscating Mikey's Bonky items. At his Bonky-themed birthday party, they uncover Mrs. Blumberg as the mascot, traumatizing Mikey. Eventually, Mikey realizes he has outgrown Bonky, finding comfort in his mom's assurance of support. Embracing his newfound independence, Mikey boards the bus alone with his friends by his side. Spinelli's adeptness at giving advice earns her the title of Guru Lady, leading to the Guru Kid's redundancy. Embracing her new role, Spinelli becomes a sought-after advisor, resolving conflicts with her trademark toughness. Her advice takes a turn when she starts advocating aggressive tactics, causing chaos on the playground. Concerned, the gang tries to intervene, but Spinelli's influence proves difficult to counter. Eventually, they seek help from the Guru Kid, who returns to restore order. He educates the students on personal responsibility, allowing Spinelli to step back and retire from her advising role, reuniting with the gang. The recess gang notices peculiar behavior from Miss Grock, suspecting she may be leading a double life. They follow her and witness her receiving a mysterious package, leading them to believe she's a spy. They test her loyalty in class, questioning her about her preferences and observing her reactions. When Miss Grock leaves to meet someone, the gang decides to investigate further. They follow her to a bookstore and discover she's actually a magician performing under the alias The Mysterious Grok. Believe they congratulate her and she admits she kept it secret due to self-doubt. TJ and the gang devise Operation Contrum and Candy to retrieve all the candy confiscated by Miss Finster. When she sprains her ankle, they take advantage of her absence to reclaim the candy but feel guilty afterward. They rally the students to support Miss Finster, realizing they shouldn't take advantage of her injury. Miss Finster declines to return early, setting a busy schedule. In the King Bob Classic Soccer Tournament, Vince's refusal to include Mikey and his team leads to hurt feelings and tension. Mikey joins Lawson's team as their goalkeeper, causing further conflict. As the tournament progresses, both teams face off and Mikey shines as Lawson's goalkeeper. Meanwhile, Vince wrestles with guilt while the gang grapples with their actions. Through the tournament, Vince and Mikey learn about friendship, teamwork, and forgiveness. 
They realize that their bond is more important than winning and reconciling, reaffirming their friendship. The Rissess gang constructs Fort Tender in the playground for their enjoyment, but Lawson and the Ashleys seize it. Determined to reclaim their fort, the gang crafts a plan to outsmart their rivals using traps and teamwork. As the conflict unfolds, both sides engage in pranks and battles to gain control. The rivalry escalates as they compete for the fort. Ultimately, the Recess Gang prevails, defending Fort Tender and reclaiming it as their own. The Recess Gang witnesses the binary fission of a bacterium in science class, sparking Gus's fear of germs. Mikey, however, views germs as living creatures and gives them names. Gretchen's clarification about germs being everywhere exacerbates Gus's paranoia. He shows up at Recess in a biohazard suit, spreading fear about germs. Menlo joins his campaign, and soon most students are wearing protective gear. They even clean the playground and disinfect it. Mikey protests, leading to a fight with Gus. Gretchen intervenes, explaining that germs are part of life and can be beneficial. She reconciles Gus and Mikey, who then reopen the playground, realizing germs aren't all bad. Spinelli's mom takes her to a beauty museum to make her more girly, prompting Spinelli to ask Gretchen to accompany her. At the museum, Gretchen impresses Spinelli's parents with her knowledge and skills, causing Spinelli to feel overshadowed and annoyed. When Gretchen changes Spinelli's family recipe and Spinelli confronts her, she tells Gretchen she doesn't want to be her friend anymore. Gretchen seeks help from the rest of the gang, who explain that parents often admire other kids' talents. To mend their friendship, Gretchen pretends to be different in front of Spinelli's parents, but Spinelli realizes the truth. Spinelli's parents reassure her that they love her as she is, and they watch a tape of the missed fight, restoring their harmony. Randall, fed up with King Bob's dismissive attitude, catches him in a compromising situation at the mall and uses the photos to blackmail him. In exchange for keeping the photos secret, King Bob is coerced into declaring Randall a prince and going into exile. With Randall now in power, he begins a tyrannical rule over the playground. The gang, realizing the danger of Randall's reign, urges King Bob to reveal the truth and regain his rightful place. They support him by sharing their own embarrassing stories, hoping to win over the other kids and restore King Bob's leadership. Vince finds himself out of sync with his classmates after missing out on the latest pop culture craze, Nitwits 3, as he was forbidden to see it due to its age restriction. Feeling isolated, he attempts to fit in by sneaking out to watch the movie, only to face disappointment and punishment from his parents when they discover his deception. Grounded and unable to watch TV, Vince returns to school, hoping to bond over movie quotes with his peers, only to find them absorbed in a new TV premiere he missed. Left feeling dejected and out of touch, Vince learns the consequences of dishonesty and the importance of accepting his limitations. Gretchen finds herself resentful of TJ's seemingly effortless ability to avoid trouble and get what he wants while she faces consequences for minor infractions. When they are assigned to work together on a project, Gretchen is apprehensive due to TJ's reputation for irresponsibility. Despite her initial reluctance, Gretchen decides to collaborate with TJ on a project about ancient civilizations. However, their presentation goes awry when TJ accidentally ruins their sugar cube pyramid. Determined to make amends, TJ stays up all night to create an alternative project based on Gretchen's original idea of ancient Mesopotamia. Their efforts pay off when they receive an A, prompting Gretchen to acknowledge TG's efforts with gratitude. The gang expresses dissatisfaction with the cafeteria food, prompting Vince to boast he could do better. When Lawson challenges him to prove it, Vince takes charge of the kitchen, impressing everyone with his culinary skills. Chez Vince becomes a hit, but Chef Pierre, impressed by Vince's talent, offers him a chance to study in France. Concerned about losing their friend, the gang plots to sabotage Vince's souffle test. However, they ultimately decide to support his dreams, and Vince chooses friendship over a culinary career, opting to hang out with the gang at Kelso's instead of going to France. Mikey, named the school's first poet laureate, seeks help from Menlo to improve his focus for writing. However, Menlo's advice turns Mikey into an efficiency-driven robot. Realizing their friend's plight, the gang joins forces with Menlo to bring back Mikey's creativity. Working together, they help Mikey find balance, allowing him to regain his poetic spirit just in time for the ceremony. Mikey convinces the gang to join him in visiting elderly residents at a nursing home, despite conflicting plans for a sin or fusion convention. Initially awkward, they eventually bond with the residents over shared interests. Mikey's attempts at singing fall flat until he learns to take song requests, realizing he hadn't considered the residents' preferences. This small gesture transforms the experience into a meaningful connection for everyone involved. The Recess gang skips a lecture to play basketball, resulting in a makeup session where they compete in a quiz. Gus reminds them about the cartoon call-out, but TJ claims to be busy. Suspicious, the gang discovers TJ preparing for a friend's birthday party. Feeling betrayed, they confront TJ, who reveals his long-standing friendship with Menlo. Despite initial doubt, they apologize and attend the party together, reaffirming their bond. The episode concludes with the gang joyfully heading to the cartoon call-out on their bikes. Miss Grok's class learns about the effects of global warming on the hottest day of the year. 
When the fan breaks, she teaches them about visualization to cool off, but only Gus succeeds in visualizing a cold place. Despite Spinelli's interruptions, Gus shares his story of a cold adventure in the Alps with his father and a dog named Hoodlum. Inspired by Gusta's tale, the gang embarks on a quest to find the backup water valve to cool down the school. Along the way, they face challenges, including the refusal of the Ashleys to provide shelter from the heat. Ultimately, they reach the valve and Gus turns it on, activating sprinklers across the playground and providing relief from the heat. The episode ends with the students enjoying the water and playing in the sprinklers, thanks to Gus's visualization and determination. The gang is suspicious when the Ashleys give Spinelli six front row wrestling tickets. She thinks they are a counterfeit, but Gus and Mikey are convinced that they are not, so they quickly run to get four friends to come. While in the Ashley's clubhouse, Gretchen, Vince, TJ, and Spinelli spot the Ashley's rulebook, find a rule that proves that the tickets were real and attempt to run to Gus and Mikey. But they were stuck because there was a door that can only be unlocked by the Ashley's. Now Gretchen, Vince, TJ, and Spinelli are stuck, much to Spinelli's dismay. TJ's only choice was to call for help. Meanwhile, Gus and Mikey, along with Miss Finster, Tubby, Hector, and Captain Sticky are watching the fight. On the other hand, Hank is trying to get them out but is failing. Mikey and Gus express their interest in joining the Woodchuck Scouts, led by Phil. Initially hesitant to accept new members, Phil eventually agrees to let them join. Throughout the episode, Mikey and Gus enthusiastically participate in scouting activities, learning about teamwork and perseverance. They overcome challenges and earn the respect of Phil and their fellow scouts, proving their dedication to the troop. By the end, they embrace the values of the Woodchuck Scouts and form strong bonds with their fellow members. After discovering a $100 bill outside of 3rd Street School, TJ and his friends excitedly plan to spend the money on extravagant items. However, Gus reminds them that the money likely belongs to someone who lost it. TJ takes charge and leads the gang on a quest to find the rightful owner. Their search takes them throughout 3rd Street and eventually leads them to the mansion of Thaddeus T3rd V. Thaddeus T3rd V reveals that he orchestrated this scenario as a test of people's morals. Impressed by the gang's honesty and integrity, he rewards them with an even better prize. The gang learns an important lesson about doing the right thing, even when it's difficult and they are rewarded for their integrity in the end. The Recess Gang finds themselves in a complex situation involving family rivalries, friendship, and reconciliation. When Gus defends Courtship Girl from Clyde Fillmore's bullying, it sets off a chain of events that leads to a confrontation between their fathers, Lieutenant Griswold and Lieutenant Luke LeMays, who are longtime rivals. As Gus and Courtship Girl, whose real name is revealed to be Theriasa LeMays, bond over shared interests and defy their father's feud by secretly becoming friends, the gang supports their friendship while navigating the challenges of keeping it hidden from their dads. TJ devises a plan to unite the two fathers, setting up a meeting in a nearby park. However, when the argument between Griswold and LeMays escalates, the kids intervene, expressing their desire for friendship over enmity and highlighting the positive impact their friendship could have on their father's relationship. Though the fathers initially resist, they eventually see the wisdom in their children's words and agree to set aside their rivalry for the sake of their kids' friendship. While their relationship is still fraught with tension, the resolution marks a promising step towards reconciliation. The episode concludes with the gang and their newfound friends celebrating their successful intervention, hopeful for a future where their families can coexist peacefully. The recess gang is taken aback when Galileo's test predicts that Mikey will grow to an astonishing 15 feet tall in the future. Initially excited by the prospect, Mikey's perspective changes drastically after he has a nightmare in which he becomes a towering giant wreaking havoc on the city. Haunted by his terrifying dream, Mikey becomes determined to prevent the potential disaster he imagines from coming true. Fearing the consequences of his enormous size, he isolates himself under a jungle gym, vowing never to emerge again in order to keep the world safe. The gang is alarmed by Mikey's sudden withdrawal and attempts to convince him that the test results are not a certainty and that he should not let fear dictate his actions. Despite their efforts, Mikey remains resolute, unwilling to take any chances. As the gang rallies to support their friend, they work together to find a way to help Mikey overcome his fears and regain his confidence. With their encouragement and reassurance, Mikey begins to see that his future is not predetermined by a single test and that he has the power to shake his own destiny. Gus is left behind when his dad forgets to give him the permission slip to attend his first state fair with his friends. Feeling disappointed and left out, Gus remains at school while his friends enjoy the fair. Meanwhile, at the fair, TJ and the rest of the gang feel guilty for leaving Gus behind. They decide to collect cans for a charity drive and create their own fair at school to cheer up Gus. As they set up the fair at school, Gus initially feels resentful and left out. However, as he sees the effort his friends put into making it special for him, he begins to appreciate their gesture and realizes that true friendship is more important than missing out on one event. Gus accidentally injures the school's current AV kid, prompting the need for a replacement. 
Despite his initial reluctance, Gus takes on the role becoming the new AV kid. As he learns the ropes of operating the audio-visual equipment, he faces challenges and mishaps but ultimately discovers a hidden talent for the job. With the support of his friends, Gus gains confidence and successfully fulfills his duties, earning respect from his peers. As Principal Prickly takes up golfing, Vince is enlisted as his caddy, leading to rumors among the students that Vince has gained unfair advantages due to his proximity to the principal on the golf course. As Vince accompanies Principal Prickly, jealousy and tension brew among his classmates, who believe he's receiving special treatment. However, Vince's experiences as a caddy reveal the truth. His role isn't as glamorous or influential as imagined. Instead, he faces challenges and frustrations while assisting Principal Prickly on the golf course. Meanwhile, his classmates begin to understand that Vince's position doesn't grant him real power. In the end, the students realize their misconceptions and appreciate the equality among them. In the episode, Lawson becomes jealous of the gang's continuous success and recognition on the playground. Feeling sidelined and overshadowed, he decides to form a new crew composed of counterparts to each member of the gang. Lawson's new group appears to be more efficient at various activities, including helping others, pulling pranks, and protesting against the administration's decisions. This newfound success leaves the gang feeling depressed and unsure of their place on the playground. However, Mikey reminds them that their bond as best friends remains unbreakable, regardless of external circumstances. Despite facing challenges and doubts, the gang realizes that they still have each other's support and friendship. When a problem arises that even Lawson's gang can't solve, the gang rallies together and proves that their unity and teamwork are invaluable. Mikey forms an unexpected friendship with Cursed, the Worst, a girl known for her tough demeanor and rebellious attitude. Despite their initial differences, Mikey discovers that Curse shares his love for food and they bond over sharing massive lunches together. As their friendship deepens, both the gang and Curse group of fellow bad kids become upset and confused by their newfound connection. The gang feels betrayed by Mikey's association with Curse, while Curse friends view her friendship with Mikey as a betrayal of their group. When the cafeteria's huckleberry cobbler dessert goes missing, suspicion falls on Curse, and Mikey is faced with a difficult decision. He must choose between defending his new friend and standing up for what he believes is right or siding with everyone else and risking their disapproval. Ultimately, Mikey chooses to defend Curse and stand by her side, despite the pressure from his friends and Curse peers. Randall recruits the Tylers, younger brothers of the Ashleys, to assist him in his snitching endeavors. However, things quickly take a turn when the Tylers rebel against Randall, the Recess Gang, and even their own sisters, the Ashleys. Their rebellious behavior causes chaos and disruption on the playground, leading both gangs to team up and scheme against them. As the Tylers continue to cause trouble, Randall realizes that he may have underestimated their determination and resourcefulness. The Recess Gang and the Ashleys join forces to come up with a plan to put an end to the Tylers' antics once and for all. Through teamwork and cooperation, the two rival groups devise a clever scheme to outsmart the Tylers and restore order to the playground. In the end, the Tylers learn the consequences of their actions and are taught a valuable lesson about the importance of respect and cooperation. Comrade Mundy, a famous bully, unexpectedly gains popularity among his peers after he heroically saves Cindy, a kindergartner, from being hit by a ball. His sudden rise to fame creates a dilemma for the Recess Gang, who must grapple with the conflicting feelings of wanting to set things right while also facing pressure from their classmates to accept Mundy's newfound popularity. Skeens and Lazy Kid, recognizing the need to address the situation, urge the Recess Gang to take action to restore balance to the playground dynamics. Despite initial reluctance, the gang agrees to intervene and rectify the situation. They devise a plan to confront Mundy and encourage him to use his newfound influence for positive purposes, rather than continuing his bullying behavior. Through their efforts, they hope to show Mundy the importance of kindness and empathy towards others, especially those who may be vulnerable or in need of support. As the episode unfolds, the Recess Gang navigates various challenges and obstacles in their quest to set things right. They confront Mundy, engage in dialogue with him, and ultimately succeed in persuading him to change his ways and become a positive influence on the playground. In the final episode, TJ, typically the confident and resourceful leader of the Recess Gang, experiences a crisis of confidence after a string of unsuccessful plans and setbacks. Faced with mounting pressure and self-doubt, he begins to question his abilities and leadership skills, leading him to step back from his role as the group's leader. As he grapples with his insecurities, the rest of the Recess Gang must adapt to the absence of their usual leader. Without TJ at the helm, the group struggles to function effectively, and tensions rise among its members. Despite his reluctance to lead, TJ's absence leaves a void within the group, prompting them to rally together and support their friend during his time of need. Through their encouragement and reassurance, TJ gradually regains his confidence and realizes that leadership is not solely about success, but also about perseverance and resilience in the face of adversity. 
As the episode unfolds, TJ learns valuable lessons about humility, self-belief, and the importance of teamwork. With the support of his friends, he rediscovers his confidence and reaffirms his role as the leader of the Recess Gang, leading them to overcome challenges and achieve success once again. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then do let us know about your favorite episode of the series. Also, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.